Well, I'm excited to share a very special project and introduce one of the coolest guys I've ever met. You know, shortly after I made the move from Los Angeles back home to British Columbia, I had the privilege of being introduced to Chris Harris. We're talking about a world-renowned photographer, an absolute mountain man, a guy who literally has probably spent more time in British Columbia's backcountry than everyone I know combined. This guy's gone out and built a cabin with his bare hands. He's survived an avalanche. This guy literally has spent decades in the backcountry of British Columbia with all of his camera gear, documenting it in a way that is very special. Chris has an unbelievable ability to capture light. Every one of his images just draw me in in such a big way. Well, shortly after meeting Chris, we invited one another to come visit our studios, right? I went over to his gallery and then Chris came over to my studio and yeah, it didn't take but a minute for us to embark on a collaboration. We decided right then and there, this is just too fortuitous. This is the universe bringing a couple of artists together in the middle of the woods. Yeah, we got to act on this. So that summer, Chris and I went on to produce eight short films or slideshows. And never in my life have I been inspired like I was when I was working with Chris's images. Each one of these short films is based on a different region around the area, and sort of a different kind of subject. So together, Chris and I took the time to put together these really amazing looking short films, all in high definition. And each time that Chris and I would put one of these films together and he'd sort of pass it off to me, oh man, it would inspire a flurry of creativity like I've never experienced before. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Sometimes you stumble across a project that just inspires you. And Chris's images did exactly that for me. This was one of the most exciting projects that I've ever been involved in personally. And to this day, I'm not sure I could actually reproduce it. This is what's so incredible about music and the moment, right? Many of you know what I'm talking about, but when you just get caught up in the moment of inspiration and creativity, sometimes stuff just flows and you don't even know where it comes from. You get to the end of the day and you got this incredibly cool composition and you don't even remember putting half of it together. Yeah, this is very exciting and this is exactly what I experienced working with Chris. So I'm going to go ahead and share every one of these movies, but I absolutely didn't want to do it without some kind of preface. I mean, for me to just go ahead and dump all these movies out without any kind of description or explanation of how they were made, yeah, that would be criminal, absolutely. So in an effort to gain some perspective on this project, I'm going to go ahead and share a couple of little shorts, little promos that I did with Chris, where you can have a chance to meet the man and you can also gain perspective on what we're about to look at. And I'll never forget the day once we started to work together, when you called and you said, Chris, come on over, I got something to show you. <laughs> and we sat down right here and I'm surround sound and I'm in this chair and I'm facing the screen and uh, I look at my imagery to this amazing music. I couldn't believe this, uh, this relationship we had just formed and this whole creative, uh, this whole creative endeavor we were in, embarking on. It was just a dream come true. It was amazing. Did you have a conscious decision to choose uh, the, the, the Calcareous Lakes as the first video? Because it is quite different than the rest. I know. Like I have a number of uh, slideshow sequences that I could have brought over to you, Ken, but I decided to on a selection of images that were very abstract. Because I, like I said, I had no idea what kind of music you produced. And I thought this would uh, sort of open up uh, a window into what you did and how we could work together. So yeah, there was a selection of about 60 abstract images made in these calcareous lakes. And when I came over to see what you had produced around those abstracts, wow. That was a good choice. Well, I was photographing for a book called Flyover. Basically, it's the whole Caribou Chocotan Coast region of central British Columbia photographed from the air. And uh, I was on my very first flight when I looked down and I saw this lake, and it's called a calcareous lake. It's like an alkali lake with uh, algae blooms of all different colors that changes throughout the summer. 
And when I first looked at that, I said, wow. And I asked my pilot friend to circle around this lake once again and then again. And I kept photographing these lakes and then there's more of them. And they were all different, different colors, different shapes. And after that, I made a purpose of going out to photograph these calcareous lakes because I could visualize uh, this, this whole slide sequence put to music. Although I hadn't met Ken yet, I could always visualize it put to music and in, in this abstract form. And uh, so to have Ken bring all that abstraction into life and back to reality, that, that was a, just an amazing coincidence. Though you've printed many of the images that are in these videos, in past books and different publications and so on, this is the first time they've been in high definition on a on a on a monitor, and and Absolutely. they look stunning and stellar. And Absolutely. it's like no, it's influencing how I shoot now because I can visualize these creations uh, working with Ken. So I'm out there in the field, listening to Ken's music and uh, and making imagery at the same time. It's 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 just the best. You know? You know, I photograph for the life experiences and this region of central British Columbia is astounding in terms of its uh, biodiversity. And I'm literally in so inspired by the land. And I can, I can feel the land. It's, uh, it's, it's not innate to me. The land is alive, it has consciousness and I'm, and, and I'm forever trying to interpret that.
The Chilcotin Arc is a phenomenon which could well be the most significant story of the 21st century. In the heart of British Columbia lies the Caribou Chilcotin Coast, with its two mountain ranges, fjordlands, grasslands, volcanoes, and two distinct rainforests. It is the most biodiverse region in the whole of Canada. Within this region lies the Chilcotin Arc. With 10 of British Columbia's 14 biogeoclimatic zones, the Chilcotin Arc is the largest, contiguous, and most diverse wilderness complex anywhere in the temperate world. In the northwest corner of the arc are brightly colored shield volcanoes, which glow yellow, orange, red, and pink on the horizon. Over 600 kilometers to the southeast, on the eastern fringes of the arc, lie semi-desert grasslands, the last great blue bunch wheatgrass grassland on the planet. The backbone that connects these two divergent ecoregions are the coast mountains and their alpine foothills. These are alpine areas with the highest concentration of alpine lakes in North America. Beautiful areas to camp, hike, or canoe. The Chilcotin Arc is twice the size of Banff and Jasper National Parks combined, larger than the country of Belgium. It is biologically and ecologically an intact landscape, functioning as it always has since the beginning of time. For a planet in climate crises, the Chilcotin Arc could influence planetary history by becoming a true refuge, where life could survive and later spread out and repopulate the continent. Such a refuge known as Beringia existed in Yukon, Alaska, where plants, animals and humans survived throughout the last ice age. When the ice melted, life moved out across North America. The Chilcotin Arc could become a similar refuge, should climate warming continue. Born of the towering coast mountains are the Caribou Chilcotin grasslands, a landscape of canyons and plateaus covered with bunch grasses, sage, and flowering plants. Nestled along the cliffs and hoodoos of the Fraser and Chilcotin rivers, these grasslands represent the rarest biome of intact bunchgrass grasslands left on the planet. I have walked through these grasslands in every season. In winter, the land is quiet. Spring is marked by an explosion of life, and summer is a time of miracles as life survives the dry heat. Fall brings us color and the clashing sounds of bighorn sheep. Birds define the spirit of the grasslands. Listening to the songs of the meadowlark and the vesper sparrow are now a part of who I am. Amidst the quietude, the elements of space and light are the gifts which one receives in this landscape. The spirit in the grass is for all who walk there. Nowhere have I felt more alive than when hiking through geological time across the shield volcanoes of the Chilcotin Arc. It was here that I realized that landscape was the first gift of the universe to planet Earth. The elemental forces at play here are humbling. From 3,000 kilometers below the surface upon where we walked, lava has erupted hundreds of times over a period of five million years. Volcanoes are one of the Earth's most profound landscapes. Yet of the seven billion people walking the planet, only a few hundred have set foot on the Rainbow, El Gacho, and Itcha volcanoes. With rapid global warming, remnants of the last ice age are quickly disappearing and new landscapes are being revealed for the very first time. With cameras, canoes, and a few friends, I flew to the Chilcotin Arc to experience climate change firsthand. Our most breathtaking experience was paddling in a garden of icebergs. The beauty, power, and fragility of planet Earth was revealed to us as we wove in and around their shapes, textures, and colors. Their immensity was humbling. Everything was alive with movement and sound. Meltwater dripped from the ice above us while bubbles of 50,000-year-old air rose to the surface around our canoes we were breathing an ancient atmosphere. We felt suffused by this ancient memory of the planet. As it was being released around us, 
we understood what a privilege it was to be here. The spirit of the Chilcotin Ark is still intact, and that is why a small group of us felt it was an ethical imperative to photograph, research, and publish this book about the Caribou Chilcotin Coast, and most importantly, tell the story of the Chilcotin Ark. We must realize that we are not separate from nature. We are all interconnected. It is only through understanding and establishing value to a place will we treat the land and its people with integrity and respect. By sharing this story, our dream is that the seventh generation will be able to experience the Chilcotin Ark as we have, and that the Chilcotin Ark will still be functioning as it has since the beginning of time.